everybody, welcome back to Prime 5, your five biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours, or as it is over the weekend, and we have a ton of big news for you, a brand new Indie World was announced, Sonic Frontiers reviews have dropped, although there's a little strangeness with it because it's Sonic, so of course there is, we have brand new news on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and yes, the big story today, we actually have official confirmation of new hardware from Nintendo. Hey, I doubt it. Okay, see you on the road. What? Let's get into it. But first, before we do, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Maybe leave a comment down below as well and let me know what is your biggest and most anticipated upcoming video game whether it's this year 2023 don't care what platform doesn't need to be switched we can go pc we can go i don't know xbox playstation whatever you're looking forward to let me know your most anticipated game down below and hey we are on our road to 80,000 subscribers so thanks so much ahead of time for hitting that subscribe button all right our first story today deals with sonic frontiers because it's been quite the interesting day as today is the review embargo day and let's just get right into it at the time of recording metacritic does have it at a 73 I have seen it as high as a 77 today, as low as a 72. Don't think we're going to get back up to the 77. Can it go from 73 to 74? I don't know. Obviously, as more reviews come out at the time, you know, there's like over 60 at this point. So I'm not sure if it's really going to move much off of 73. Now, people do seem to enjoy the cyberspace areas of the game. The story itself does hit for some, but not for others. A lot of people find the open world combat itself to kind of be weird. Uh, some are enjoying it, but most just say it doesn't feel quite right again i haven't played the game so i can't really tell you what that's about there are a lot of complaints about technical problems two of them in particular one of them being poppin something we've already seen in the trailers and it's one thing you know to complain about foliage popping in but literal platforms you need to land on as you're flying through the air won't even appear until you almost need to land on them and that seems to be really bothering some people also the camera in the open world seems to just decide to do what whatever the hell it feels like at times. So you'll be like climbing something and the camera will just shift out of the way and you won't be able to see what you're doing. It's really weird. I hope a patch can come to at least fix the camera issues. I don't think the popping can be fixed. I think it's, they push the visuals too far and in doing so because Sonic goes so fast, it's just the way it is. And by the way, all these reviews are of the PlayStation 5 version. So we're not just being like, oh, this is the Switch version. In fact, zero Switch copies were sent over review. And notably, no copies for Xbox Series were sent from review either. They only sent out PlayStation 5 copies. Now, obviously, Switch is the weakest hardware. And Xbox has a weaker version of their hardware with the Xbox Series S. So my theory is they wanted the initial reviews to be best foot forward and throw a PlayStation 5. Of course, it being at a 73 doesn't bode well. That does rank it behind Sonic Mania, who was in the 80s. It ranks it even behind Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations. This actually is starting to approach the bad category of Sonic games in terms of its reviews, and they were very confident this would actually be one of the best. In fact, remember, they said, we wanted this to be a highly reviewed game, and it's not actually getting high reviews but i don't know i'm gonna play it for myself for you guys you know tomorrow on live stream my very first time playing it i'm gonna play it for you guys we'll look at it together and i'll give you my initial impressions it's probably not nearly as bad as they make it out to be it's also probably not nearly as good as some people make it out to be the truth is somewhere in the middle my favorite sonic game of all time is sonic lost world and that is like a 63 on metacritic so it's not as if i look at review scores as the be all end all i want to decide for myself and you know what i'll give you some initial impressions tomorrow speaking of tomorrow we do get some big news coming from pokemon scarlet and violet they have a brand new in-depth trailer dropping at 6 a.m pacific time or for me that's 8 a.m central you guys can convert it to whatever time zone you need to now look we know the game is leaked there's screenshots out there people are playing it i've seen uh, someone try to live streaming it once look we're not going to worry about the leaks we're just going to cover the official stuff there's a brand new trailer coming that's what we're going to focus on tomorrow so hey Tune in tomorrow for some Pokemon Scarlet and Violet news. Now, speaking of the Pokemon team, one thing I mentioned is that, hey, look, we are going to have some hardware coming from Nintendo at some point, and we have some confirmation that hardware exists, and that is because of Creatures, Inc. So they are hiring somebody at Creatures, Inc., and this matters because Creatures, Inc. works directly with Nintendo, Game Freak, Pokemon Company. They're co-owned by Nintendo and the Pokemon Company, so 
That's why we need to pay attention. This hiring post is really, really cool. So they're hiring a 3D CG character modeler for the Pokemon franchise. This is what Creatures Inc. mostly does. A lot of the modeling for Pokemon. So in this post is the first official reference from someone who is tied directly to Nintendo and working on things for a next generation platform, specifically for next gen because the job you know listing is pretty in depth. They need to be able to do research and development for it, AKA just make sure your models work on whatever the next hardware is. So if you want to look at this in a more broad context, this is the first official confirmation that yes, Nintendo has new hardware coming and yes, the people making Pokemon have access to it already. So take that for what you will. It's always really exciting when we're talking about new hardware. This doesn't mean it's coming next year. That's my speculation. We're getting it next year. Not a rumor, not based on, you know, any, you know, I don't know, leaks or anything. This is official news right here. Pokemon company clearly has next gen hardware. They're hiring someone who needs to make sure their models work on said hardware. And that's what we got. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Switch to anyone? Now, Nintendo didn't want to let Pokemon and Sonic own all the headlines this week, so they decided to drop a massive Indie World in two days on November 9th. This Indie World is going to be taking place at 9 a.m. Pacific, so 11 a.m. Central for me. It's going to be about 25 minutes long, which is a very long Indie World, and it says it's going to be on upcoming games. Obviously, we all would love to see, I don't know, a certain knight that is hollow uh, get an update and reconfirmations on Switch and a release date. I know it's coming to Xbox as well, but a lot of us would like to see that happen. But who knows? They have a bunch of indie games. And they usually highlight some of the best of the best. So we'll just have to wait and see. I just hope it's not a repeat of the Farming Simulator Direct look. I love farming sim games, but also we don't need two of those back to back. Let's get a wide variety of indie games here and I'll be pretty happy. Our last story actually deals with, well, Tears of the Kingdom. Believe it or not, we have a smidge of news around this game thanks to a brand new interview. So it appears that the great Deku Tree, Ravali, and Teba may not be in, well, Tears of the Kingdom, or at least will have smaller roles. So small, in fact, they won't be voice acted because the voice actor for those characters, Sean Chiplock, has stated in a recent interview that he is looking forward to Tears of the Kingdom so you can find out what, if anything, has happened to the characters he's voiced, which he admits he has no knowledge of, which means he wasn't hired to voice anyone this time around. Now, this doesn't mean the game won't have a bunch of voice acting, just his specific characters aren't there. At the end of the DLC, it was obvious that Rivali is probably done, as is the rest of the original champions. The Lost Woods hasn't appeared in any of the trailers, so some fear it might have been destroyed, and so along with it, the Great Deku Tree, but we don't know for sure. And yeah, this is the second time in the series the Great Deku Tree would have died, so there is that. Teba is actually kind of interesting, because what happened to Teba? Teba's still alive at the end of Breath of the Wild, so very curious there. Obviously, it's also possible that he was just replaced as a voice actor, but he hasn't said anything about even being approached to do work on the game and turning it down. He did do some voice work recently for Age of Calamity, so I don't feel like there would be any big disputes. And yes, the voice work is likely complete with less than seven months to go, though last-minute additions can always happen. If those characters aren't back at all, I too will be curious if the game will explain what happened to Teba and the Great Deku Tree in particular. I don't know that we need to hear about Rivali. Rivali already was gone by the end of that DLC. Anyways, you guys let me know what you think about this stuff down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime and go Bucks, baby! Woo! Let's get to 10-0. What a hot start to the season. Catch you guys in the next video.